Hi, uh, so I'm going to do another book review slash recommendation slash chat about books and uh, this time uh, quite aptly I think because of the current climate with the pandemic it's about humour, we all need humour uh, and uh, I think we need it quite a lot at the minute um, but it's quite a, a big thing for me um, because I read a lot of um, humorous books um, especially uh, I look for uh, science fiction books that have got humorous thread running through them, you know, humorous style. So uh, that's why I wanted to recommend some books that you may not have heard of, as well as a few that you probably do know. One big one that everybody talks about that's uh, kind of an obvious one. Um, but yeah, humor in science fiction. So 10 books, kind of 10 books, with a few extra books mentioned, uh, based around the idea of comedy in science fiction. Go. So, so the obvious place to begin is this, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is the big one, this is the one that everybody compares every book to, and literally, if you're writing a uh, comedic science fiction book, then somewhere, if it's successful, somewhere on the front or the back is going to say, uh, just like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or a little nod to Douglas Adams, or this is a rip-off of the... You know, no, I won't say that, but <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a huge, huge influence and it's, or for all the right reasons, it's an enormously, fantastically brilliant book. Um, it's, uh, if you don't know what it's about, which you probably do, um, it's um, about a man who's interrupted by an alien to tell him that um, his mate has been an alien for a long time and that he's got to tell him, because he cares about him, he wants to tell him that the Earth is about to be blown up by um, an alien race to make way for a, an interstellar motorway. Um, and he wants him to get off the planet with him because he's a friend and uh, and this character, Arthur Dent, does go with him and he goes on this adventure through lots of different um, uh, planets, galaxies, meets lots of aliens um, and it's very funny and there's um, technically five books um, in the series there's another one that his son wrote as well um, the fifth book isn't as good as the others and my personal favourite when I originally read them, but I do want to read them again soon, was the third book, Life, the Universe and Everything. So it'd be interesting if I read them again, what I think. Um, but I did read the fourth one quite recently and I was a bit disappointed. It's not quite as funny and it's got a bit of a sombre tone to it. And I think that's because of where Douglas Adams was when he wrote it in his head. But yeah, the first three especially are um, very funny. Um, they're legendary books. I mean, you know, they are... Um, books that have had a massive influence. Um, I would say that um, Douglas Adams himself has been influenced by someone else I'm going to mention um, who doesn't get mentioned enough, who's one of my favourite people. Um, so he didn't come out of nowhere. Um, it, this kind of writing had been done before, but this was a huge hit. Started off as a radio series and then he wrote a book from the radio series. So that's kind of an unusual situation um, to happen. And then from that, there was an awesome BBC series that came out of that. And then... Fast forward to relatively recently, there's been a film as well. The film's got some good elements to it, but it's also got some dodgy elements to it. So it's a bit odd. Um, there's, some, there's things to praise, but there's things they got wrong, I think. Uh, the BBC series doesn't really do anything wrong, I don't think, from what I remember. Um, I saw some of it again. And obviously the effects are dated because it's the 80s, but um, I don't think that matters. If you're into science fiction, you're probably quite forgiving about effects and that kind of thing but uh but yeah you don't worry about that just read the book uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy um fantastic douglas adams so a good place to go after douglas adams and the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy is the guy i almost mentioned who wrote just like douglas adams but before he was writing stuff. So uh, the first book I'm going to mention here, the main book that I want to sort of base this guy around, um, dates to 1966. And that's a guy called Robert Sheckley. So Robert Sheckley here, um, he wrote this book, Mind Swap, in 1966. It's one of my favourite books. It's completely mad. Uh, and a lot of his books are completely mad. Um, and uh, it's just amazing. Um, I mean, he writes... The way he writes quite often, um, it's like his main character or his main characters tend to um, sort of go from bizarre situation to bizarre situation, to character to character to character, and the plot is, is a very loose thing, 
to give the character an opportunity to find um, strange people, giving the main character strange philosophies on life and making them think, well, that's, life's a bit weird. Uh, so that's kind of the take on his writing. But I love it. And uh, I've read, as you know, if I find a book by him, I'll buy it. And I've got several copies of the same book with him. Uh, uh, with lots of these things. Like I've got uh, three versions of this book, for example. Um, but there's quite a few books like that. So, yeah, I love Robert Sheckley to death. And, uh, yeah, completely mad. Totally mad. Um, this book has got a plot. Um, and this is about a man who's really bored. He wants to go on holiday. And he's heard about this new thing where you can swap bodies um, with someone from a, another planet. And you can live um, on, in that body um, for a while and then come back in. Uh, so it's like a little jaunt into another planet and into another kind of life form. So he does that. He thinks it's a great idea. It gives him an opportunity to see places he's never seen before. Um, but it all goes wrong because someone else has nicked. Basically runs off with his body and then he's swapping. And then his body is going into the other bodies. And basically he's got to find... He's got to reclaim his body again. Um, and he goes on to this adventure to try and find... It. And, and it, you can only have... Uh, you can only be in someone else's body for so long for like 14 hours or something and then uh your mind's gonna go mental so um so he's got like a timer um on trying to um he has to keep jumping bodies to try and find his own and it's it's really good it's very funny and it's very silly uh and there are some conversations that are literally just wordplay and that kind of thing uh so mind swap 1966 um and very awesome and just a little nugget about robert sheckley um i'm just gonna talk about some other th things with him so that's the main one there uh, if we're counting books. Um, but The Alchemical Marriage of Alistair Compton is another awesome book. Um, you can kind of see a similar kind of mindset here where he's, it's about a schizophrenic that is not um, in a good mental health state. Um, so um, he um, has this operation to separate... No, he had this operation, sorry, to separate his three personalities into different bodies and it's not worked, it's not made him happy. So he needs to try and find these bodies again to bring them back again. So um, you can see a kind of a similar thing there where he's trying to find himself like he is with um, Mind Swap. But again, very good, very funny. And his other personalities are very happy where they are and they don't want to come back and that kind of thing. Um, and I just like one quick shout out about these books, Dramacles and Options. Options I seem to see a lot in um, second-hand shops. So I don't know if... Um, I've got like three copies of this. So I don't know if... Um, that was sold more than the others, I don't know. But uh, these two books are really good examples where he just goes off on one and the plot is really thin and it's just they're just funny. Um, so um, that's that's a lot of that. It's about a man with a with his robot um, that's um, going from place to place and encountering different things. And that's a, a drama piece is about a king that's unhappy. Um, but, yeah, again, two really good, cool books um, that's got Robert Sheckley's style and personality all the way through it. Uh, very silly and... Uh, the loose plot is kind of a part of his style because it's all just nonsense. Um, so here we go, Robert Sheckley. So um, this next one, I think a lot of people might relate to this if they're Star Trek fans. Um, and if they're not Star Trek fans, they've probably heard about the whole red shirt thing that if you're if you wear a red shirt as a uniform, if your uniform in Star Trek, the original series, is red, then you're probably going to die. Um, and um, John Scalzi, uh, a really good author that I've read loads of his serious books, um, but he wrote this um, comedic book about red shirts, and it completely kind of plays on that idea that all the people with the red uniforms on this starship, there's technically pretty much the Enterprise, but he never says it because clearly it's satire, so... You know, we just know that's what he's talking about. Uh, anyone with a red shirt um, in this book on the ship is scared about going on away missions because they think that as soon as they land on the planet, they're that much closer to death. And uh, and it would be like, you know, that kind of standard thing in the original series where it would be like Kirk, Spock and a couple of red shirts. And Kirk and Spock always came back. And that's obviously explored in here into a comedic effect. And, it, and it's done really well because um, it's not just... A nice idea that people have laughed and chatted about for years if they're Star Trek fans, but actually he really uses it well when he builds a plot around it and it gets quite meta at the end. Um, and uh, the I won't tell you why because it will spoil it, but um, yeah, the um, the theme is explored in a plot sense 
to the point where it goes beyond the ship and moves into other areas. Really, really good. Really funny. It's a very easy one to read, but it's very funny. And it's um, it's just really well re- well written. Red Shirts, John Scalzi. So, uh, about a year ago, about a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, maybe, I discovered uh, Christopher Moore, um, who's written quite a lot of um, uh, comedic fantasy books. Um, this is definitely sci-fi, but it's also absolutely in the style of uh, film noir, crime thriller kind of thing. Uh, but it's got sci-fi elements in it because it's about uh, alien visiting and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... Um, he uses the film noir detective trope of um, of the kind of uh, the the personality type of that detective. He's very kind of wisecracking and um, always kind of attracted to the ladies. And there's a femme fatale in it, um, and there's government agency a- agents in there, government government agents in there that are um, trying to kind of involved in the plot. I won't tell you too much because it's one of those books as well. But the less the less you know about the plot, the better. Uh, but he's called it noir because he's clearly using this book to uh, play with those kind of conventions. Um, but it's it is good. It's very funny. It's not like completely mad like some of the ones I've just mentioned. It's more kind of you smile while you're reading it. It's very uh, sardonic um, and very witty kind of humour. Uh, so a little bit more straightforward, but definitely recommended. I do think it's a really good book. So Christopher Moore, and some of his other books are really good as well. Um, there's a really good book about, there's two books that he wrote about um, death, as in The Angel of Death, and I read the first one. Um, but yeah, Christopher Moore and his book Noir. Okay, there's another book I'm going to mention which has got uh, a reference to Star Trek. This is more about sci-fi conventions. Um, and Star Trek conventions um, specifically because that's what the plot's based around. But it's a, a kind of a zombie apocalypse set at a sci-fi convention. Um, and I just sort of found this book randomly and ordered it and really, really liked it. I thought it was good fun. And it's called A Night of the Living Trekkies. Um, so, you know, it pretty much does what it says in the tin uh, and doesn't really need a lot of explanation, except for the fact that clearly the atmosphere of what it's like to be at a science fiction convention is in there, um, and there's lots of jokes about, like, in-jokes about science fiction and stuff in there. So, yeah, Night of the Living Trekkies. OK, so the next three books I'm going to talk about have all got a similar setup in the sense that their main character is a bit of a wisecracking uh, rogue character who, run, who runs a spaceship um, and uh, you usually only got like one companion um, and it's kind of like going from bad situation to worse situation and how they're trying to kind of con someone or um, it's that sort of idea of um, someone who's, who's a bit of a wheelie dealer getting by and getting into trouble. So that's the kind of a setup for, for the next three books pretty much. Um, so chances in science fiction um, and uh, they're really, really good books, really good books. The first one I'm going to talk about, um, just, I was laughing all the way through it, I loved it to death, and I can't wait to read it again. I really, really love it. Every, whenever I think about, like, my favourite books or my favourite comedy books or whatever, I always think of this one first. It's just so, it was so brilliant, it was so funny. It's written by um, someone who wrote for um, uh, The Daily Show, which is interesting, um, but it's clearly a science fiction book. Um, but, for the plot, this is this is what it's called. This is um, Sheriff of Yornamere by Michael Rubens. Right, that's the book, The Sheriff of Yornamere. I'd, I'd never heard of it until I just I was looking around the internet, found it, I thought I'd give it a go. I'm so glad I did because it is so funny. The Sheriff of Yornamere. I'm just going to read the back so you can get a sense of the plot. I need to put glasses on to read. Uh, so, um, again, so they mentioned Douglas Adams at the back, like I said earlier. That always happens, but don't worry about it. Raucously funny. Meet Cole. Hapless space rogue, part-time smuggler, his psychic just stole his girlfriend. The galaxy's most hideous and feared bounty hunter wants to lay eggs in his brain. <laughs> Keeps coming back into the plot. And a luxury space yacht called Just Hijacked turns out to be filled with interstellar do-gooders, one especially loathsome some stowaway, and a cargo of freeze-dried orphans. Cole gathers a misfit crew for a desperate journey to the far reaches of the galaxy, the mysterious world of Yornamere, the very last of the 
your name hears planets without corporate sponsors. But little does Cole suspect this leg legendary utopia is home to a band of outlaws bent on destroying the planet's tiny, peaceful community. And he ends up becoming a bit of a hero. Um, but you don't need to know too much more about the plot, but you should get it because it is really, really funny. The Sheriff of Yordamir, Michael Rubens, really, really funny. Uh, in a similar tone to uh, The Sheriff of Yonamir is uh, this one, Starship Grifters by uh, Robert Crose. I think it's, I think it's Crose. Apologies if it's not. Um, so Starship Grifters, again, really, really funny. Um, and again, the idea of a, um, a kind of a rogue character trying to um, get away with murder. You know, not murder, but, you know, get away with a lot. Um, so... I'll read a bit of the back again because I think it's the best way of doing it with these plots. Uh, Rex Nilo uh, plies the known universe in a tireless quest for his own personal gain. But when he fleeces a wealthy weapons dealer in a high stakes poker game, he ends up winning a worthless planet and owing an outstanding debt more vast than space itself. So he's got this huge debt thanks to this poker game. Uh, the only way for Rex to escape a lifetime of torture on the prison world, uh, uh, Galicatraz, is to score a big payday by pulling off his biggest scam. Uh, so I won't carry on, but basically the idea is that um, he's darting from scheme to scheme to try and uh, make money, and he's got this robot with him um, who's kind of the voice of reason, and she often roll, just rolls her eyes and thinks, oh my God, why am I with this guy? Um, and he he doesn't really listen to her and just keeps going, no, you don't get what I'm doing, this is going to be fine, it's all going to work out, and he never does. So Starship with Grifters, very funny, um, and again, it's got that light, kind of adventurous, kind of uh, uh, rogue-based plot. Starship Grifters. So now I want to talk about Yahtzee Crossshore. Uh, really good author, very funny. Um, and he's got a really nice light style that kind of works really well. Um, and I've read two of his books so far, and they're both really good. But his first one is really good. I, I laughed out loud a lot of times. Um, and that's the book called We'll Save the Galaxy for Food. Um, so again, like the other, previous two books, it's a confident sort of um, scam artist, space pirate kind of character. Basically, through this plot, the plot in this one, I won't tell you too much about the plot with this one, because again, a lot, a lot of thing with these books, the less you know, the funnier it is, because the surprise has come. Um, but he ends up uh, impersonating somebody else, which he thinks he'll gain from and it just gets him mixed up with all sorts of problems and he ends up getting um, mixed up in the politics um, that are connected to the guy that he impersonates um, but yeah, it's really funny and definitely a massive recommendation and it made me want to read everything that the Artsy Crossshore had written um, and on that note this was the next thing I read by him which was called Jam which is an apocalyptic story about the world being covered by jam so definitely what it what the title says it all but it's very good it's 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 funny and uh it's well worth a read um so yahtzee crossshaw and lastly i'm going to talk about this book it'll be crazy for me not to mention this being as i'm doing a um, a video about comedy in science fiction and that's exactly what that is it's a marriage of three different things so comedy style science fiction and music um, this is this has got loads and loads of references by the way I wrote this and I'm not sure it's clear, clear yet I haven't said that um, in the video yet but yeah this is a book called The Brown Yelp Gang uh, it's my third book and uh, the one I'm probably most proud of so far um, and this band here are The Brown Yelp Gang uh, made up of different species, as you can see. He's human, um, but these guys are from different planets, uh, other planets. Um, you can see that Trent there, the lead singer, has got three heads. Uh, so he manages to sing a three-part harmony in all the songs. Um, and then you've got these guys that have got snouts that um, are like brass instruments. And basically they, they, are, they get into a, some uh, scrapes with some uh, promoters that are kind of like mafia-type criminal minds. Uh, and um, it just kind of develops from the idea that they they offer to help one crime lord to stamp on another crime lord, but the other crime lord is up to something far bigger than just 
being annoying and they effectively save the universe uh, through um, what they event what they do uh, to investigate what's happening and eventually at a big festival um, there's this big sort of showdown at the end of the book at a festival so so yeah the brown yelp gang Gareth Howells it's uh, there's loads of basically it's a satire on lots of things I've experienced as a musician over the last 20 years or whatever 20 years 20 years years yeah um, and uh, oh, 30 years cool I'm well old uh, and yeah so it's lots of references to you know sound checks to support artists to songwriting to there's lots of silly song titles in it um, and you know things that happen at festivals um, ways to get spots at festivals, what some promoters are like, you know, that kind of stuff. It's all in there. Anyway, yeah, the Brown Yelp Gang. That's my 10th entry into this video, and it's very funny. So there you have it, 10-ish books with a comedic style, all science fiction. Um, if you like some of those ideas, then um, go and read the book, see what you think. Tell me what you think. If you've got anything that you want to say in the comments about some recommendations from what you've read, that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, hopefully you found, found some good stuff to read there. Please subscribe to the channel if you like some of these videos I've been doing. Um, and uh, we'll see how this thing builds. Thank you.